Welcome to Samutsari, Conversations with Mimi, a weekly podcast by DinoSocial, also a member of the Guerrilla Podcast Syndicate. Samutsari is where we can show that ordinary people do extraordinary things. Tune in to be entertained and to learn something new with your host, Mimi Lorilla. Hello and welcome everybody to Samutsari, Conversations with Mimi. This is your host, Mimi Laurelia, in another episode, uh, we are a podcast featuring topics of interest to both men and women alike. We feature guests who share their passion and commitment to their profession or talents. Here at Samutsari, we share stories to inspire you, um, featuring stories of ordinary people who make extraordinary things. And today, I have another guest who is seemingly an ordinary person, but she's doing a lot of extraordinary things. And she's imported from another, I don't know, 50,000 miles away <laughs> in the United States, uh, particularly in the state of Hawaii. Let me welcome to the show, Miss Sydney Villegas. Hi, Sydney. Hi, Mimi. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. So Hope you are to too. Be, oh, of course, I'm trying to be bright and I'm trying to be positive amidst all the challenges of our daily life. So Sydney, maybe the people are wondering um, why I invited you to the show. So I think the best way to start is by uh, telling us a little bit about yourself and uh, what you're doing, what's your profession at the moment and um, mm -hmm. some other tidbits about Sydney. Get to know Sydney first. Okay, sure. So hi. I'm Sydney and I've got three kids. I moved to Hawaii 10 years ago and I think this is my 11th year and I work with my husband taking care of my family and I teach so luckily I was able to continue teaching. My first five years I spent it at University of Hawaii Maui College as an English instructor and also a Filipino studies uh, instructor so I was able to build the curriculum for teaching Tagalog 101 and Philippine literature in English and then after that because you know life here is really busy and child care is also an issue so I just thought one day since most of the papers I have and surrounding me are with DOE. That's how we call the Department of Education. And three of my kids are in the public school. So why not make a shift? So I transferred to the Department of Education four years ago. And wow. from there, really, the rest, I can say, is history. Because that's where I really got my uh, job, you know, my tenure in the job and I think established myself in also in a way mm -hmm. uh, that I got to teach high school and middle school. So first year high school, then three years middle school, and this coming school year, I'll be in high school again. Because mm -hmm. you know, that's how the districts work. Right. Uh, they'll just assign you to whatever schools, mm -hmm. depending on your specialization or expertise. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah. For 11 years, I've been enjoying life here. They say in paradise, I'd like to think so. And um, also got to have and make friends too. Make friends oh, um, with some Filipino communities and uh, some other uh, subgroups here yeah. in Hawaii. Okay, so for people that um, don't know much about us, Sydney, no? We are connected. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we are connected. Yeah. So Sydney and I used to work at one of the premier private universities in the Philippines, DLSU Manila. Um, Sydney and I did a lot of work together because we, we work at the same um, department. And uh, one of uh, Sydney's children is my ina anak. Yeah. <laughs> right. God so, child. So we are connected. Yes, a, a God child. So Sydney, let's go back to your teaching. So, uh, mm -hmm. teaching in the Philippines for a long, long time, you are also an artist, uh, uh, a creative, because you do theater arts and all yes. those pr live performances. Um, mm -hmm. And in a way, you try your best to incorporate that in your teaching. 
have you right. continued your passion when you moved to Hawaii? Uh, your performances, your, your being creative, how did you incorporate that if you did have a chance to, mm-hmm. uh, you know, continue that in your new life in Hawaii? Uh, hi. So you're very right in saying that I continued integrating, at least integrating theater arts in my teaching. Because when I was an instructor, and I think up to this time, I always use creative dramatics in teaching English. So I make my students do role play, improvisations, improves, and uh, skits and dramas. And back, let's say, three years ago, when I was a Filipino teacher, I directed play productions, so plays, and the students also had this uh, song fest, song festival. So where they got to uh, sing in Tagalog and Ilocano because you know we wow. have two major groups here. Actually, Tagalog is really just a secondary group. Mm-hmm. Um, the first one is Ilocano. So I directed and organized um, song festivals maybe for two years. Mm-hmm. And even up to now, my students know that my way of teaching is always, um, you know, connected to theater arts. Like I do games. And now we have open mics and um, poetry, they call it a poetry glam. So they're all out. I always, I think, am very creative and artistic up to this day. Wow. So <laughs> if, if it's a passion of yours, it will never ever go away. So Sidi, is exactly. there um, some comparison or insight that you can share with our viewers today mm-hmm. about the type of students that you have at the moment compared to uh-huh. the type of students that you have before because <laughs> i'm assuming mostly your uh mostly hawaii is multicultural as well so yeah um, very diverse yeah so how do you cope with those nuances of those li- diversity uh cultural diversity and the type of students that you have are they more uh what do you call that more um, committed to their learning compared to the students in the Philippines or are they more resilient or just give us a little bit of a flavor of the kinds of students that you teach okay right I think I wouldn't like to say that there's a big difference you know kids are kids students are students uh, for college students they I consider them as well driven also resilient but um, if I could make you know just observe before in the philippines you know i can really say that most of our students are academics so they really study to get the degree go the uh, you know get a good job and really a profession while in college when i moved here i noticed that still there's the, the passion and the resilience the commitment but it's more i can say practical Mm. Because they just go to the, you know, the community college and get that certificate so they can practice their skill and their, uh, you know, they're more of career ready so mm. that they can be career ready. Unlike in the Philippines, we are more of college ready. You know, mm-hmm. when you have your college graduate, there's more prestige, there's more like honor and you know of course it's still a pride for our Mm. parents but Mm. what i noticed is that when i moved to hawaii everything is really very practical i mean i'll get this english um 22 or english 100 so that i can go to culinary i can work at the hotel i'll get this uh, tourism so that i can uh work in some offices so it's really practical. That's why I've, I had to make a big shift mm-hmm. from, you know, being so academic in my approach. I learned how to customize my lessons, fit it to the needs of the students. Mm-hmm. I really, it's not that I watered it down, but it's more practical, more to the point, and more, uh, you know, applicable or you know, really applicable or practical to. The field they're going to be in mm-hmm. and for elementary and high school of course we can say that you know uh, Filipinos back home can be very they're also respectful the students here but I think our students back home are more obedient okay 
Whereas I wouldn't like to say that my students now are rude. It's just that they are very direct. They speak their minds. And they can really talk to me like they're talking to their friends. <laughs> yes. <laughs> How interesting. Yeah. Tini, I think we need a part two uh, together uh -huh. just to talk about uh -huh. your teaching experiences and your teaching strategies. So I will invite right. you again for another um, episode to just deal with that because I find that sure. fascinating. And I'm sure a lot yeah. of teachers all over the world, especially the Filipino teachers, will be interested in your story. But um, uh -huh, let's sure. go back to um, Hawaii. What made mm -hmm. you decide that Hawaii is the right place for you to uproot your family and settle there mm -hmm. now? Why not oh, there California? Yeah. Why not California? New York? Why not uh -huh. uh, the Midwest? Uh -huh. Okay, that's a very good question. And, you know, I've really been thinking about it and it's a very good time for me to voice out what I've been thinking. Because, you know, for most times, I'm just alone, okay? Mm -hmm. So, thank you so much, Mimi, for the opportunity. Now, why Hawaii? Because, you know, Hawaii is really a perfect place to build a family. It's so, you can say laid back, but it's so calm. The communities are really tightly knit and close. For vacations, we would go to California, to New York, to Chicago. And I don't think I can live in big cities, you know? Um, I've observed that. Of course, I, I have nothing against the people there. Mm. It's just that now I can have not a comparison, but a good view of how to live in Hawaii and how mm -hmm. to live on the mainland. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> here, it's really just like Manila. Mm. But, you know, we, we, mostly high context because, mm. you know, it's different since people are also busy, people lead their own lives, mm -hmm. but you can feel the connection. Mm -hmm. And kids are really close and respectful of the elders mm -hmm. because that's what's being taught us. Yes. You know, on TV, in, on media, at school, that our elderly or the kupunas are the most important people. Like if I've got, for example, if I have a student who doesn't listen to me, I'll just tell that student, you know, I'm going to tell your kupuna or your tutu. Another word, that's the Hawaiian term for lola or lolo. Oh, okay. And your know, grandma or grandpa. And you know, that student will really keep quiet because that's how high that student regards the grandmom and the grandpa. Wow. Or the, the, even the parents. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah, I, I love it here. So, Sydney, <laughs> um, I, I'm thinking that I want to go to Hawaii for a future holiday. <laughs> of course. Of course. With you're my, the whole with, family with is welcome. Yeah. Yeah, is your right. house big enough for all of us? <laughs> no, you have to go. <laughs> Not really that big enough. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um, Sydney, because um, I know that you said you have uh, three kids and obviously yes. um, they, you uprooted them. And uh, can you say that the way that you raised them together with mm -hmm. your husband is still in keeping with um, predominantly Filipino values or are you incorporating Hawaiian, American and a little mm -hmm. bit of Filipino now? How, how is it like raising three kids in another country? You. Oh, good. Just like what you said. So it's a combination of Filipino uproots, you know, Filipino way of uh, rearing the kids with a touch of Hawaiian and American. So American in, in particular. What I mean is, so I was able and we were able to teach them and to instill in them respect and, you know, obedience following what not that what we tell them but realizing that what we tell them really benefits them and at the same time they can speak their minds mm -hmm. so i'm really open if i tell them okay this is what we do and then somebody will tell me for example my eldest but i don't think uh, I'll do that or mm. can I make alternatives or can, mm -hmm. can mommy is this mandatory mm -hmm. you know even if for example to give you a concrete example so of course we love mongo you mm -hmm. still know the okay the 
that that mung bean sauteed uh, dish. So every Friday, that's what we we have. And then <laughs> you're but, keeping but with the, the Filipino kids, tradition, the mung bean right, on a Friday. Right, so very Filipino. But then my eldest would ask me if uh, it's mandatory or if it's okay to have another dish, and I would say, yeah, that's fine. Mm-hmm. So that kind of um, dynamics mm-hmm. really play yeah. in the household. That's so it's right. more of okay, we are the parents. We're not saying that that you know you obey us and you follow us, but let's talk about it. It's more of you know in in here I was really able to make use of what we've learned or what we've been teaching our students way back home, and it's more of communication. Mm-hmm. We're not going to compromise, but we are just going to sit down and find out how we can figure things out. And that's I think right. that works. Yeah. <laughs> that's good. That's good. <laughs> so, you talked about how family is very integral, especially the elders in, in the Hawaiian culture, which you are obviously, um, yeah. you know, you are in that kind of culture now. Are there support networks mm-hmm. available to you and your husband and your kids? To help you out with uh, your daily things, your your sense of socialization, your sense of connection. I'm pretty sure it's the same uh, mm-hmm. where you are. You don't have a katulong or a nanny for your yeah. kids. So, so how mm-hmm. do you cope with those um, social support systems? So again, time management. Mm-hmm. And in terms of support system, good thing. Ricky has a big family here in Hawaii, here on Maui. So when the kids were young, we really got help from his mother, from my mother-in-law. So he also has uh, his sister and brother. And so, you know, especially during my first few years when I was still not driving around, Mm -hmm. when I still had to work and had, had to leave my boys, uh, Ricky's family really was a great help. Mm-hmm. But then when they were growing, uh, you know, when they were growing up, I was able to do it myself. And in terms of socialization, uh, we belong to St. Teresa Catholic Filipino Church. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so St. Teresa Church Filipino Catholic Club. Mm-hmm. So aside from our spiritual uh, growth, we were able to nourish our social, um, you know, social component, the social side of ourselves um, and our lives by in getting ourselves involved in church work and at the SDFCC. Mm-hmm. So, CD, yeah. as you might notice, I'm asking you a lot of questions about the different facets of your life, the, the different hats that you wear. Mm-hmm. You are a teacher, you're a mom, you're be- you belong to this yeah. uh, cultural group. You, you are now living yes. in another culture. Um, the reason why I wanted to ask you all these different questions is because I want um, to let people know that um, their experiences are probably the same as yours, so they're not alone. And I also want them to yeah. uh, get a little bit of an inspiration from your experience because I know that you are a person who has to do a lot of things, not just because of survival, but because this is the way of life that we have. So you can yes. go about time management. How, mm-hmm. how do you effectively juggle home management and your professional career? Like, how, uh-huh. how, how do you divide your time if there's such a thing as <laughs> dividing your time? How do you incorporate them all in a, in a 24-hour period, for example? Mm-hmm. Oh, by again, by time management, I really mean having a schedule. You know, I really wouldn't like to say I divide my time, but I schedule my time and I schedule my life. Mm -hmm. So what we do is, especially now that, you know, in two weeks, we will all go back to school. You know, Mm -hmm. it's easing in restrictions. And one of the ways that we ease restriction is to make the students go back to school. I know that will really be tough, but uh, what we do, what Rick and I do, is we sit down and we talk about our schedules and make sure that we have time. You know, we know 
uh, our time and our responsibilities. Now, mm-hmm. personally, so with that schedule, uh, I wake up very early. So that's very important thing. Mm-hmm. So for example, if my class, you know, I have to leave home because my school is still one hour drive mm-hmm. from my place. So I really have to wake up like if it's if I have to leave at six o'clock, like four o'clock, and I really make sure that I cook breakfast. You know, I leave everything because I'm I'll be the first to leave the house and Ricky takes over and you know Ricky is the one who's gonna drop off Selena mm-hmm. the two boys the high school boys take the bus mm-hmm. okay so but again there's orientation okay if you're gonna take the bus this is your schedule so I kind of be really the manager yes. the time manager <laughs> here in the house and then right. um, like the night before I also make sure that, you know, instead of watching TV, I would really prepare what mm. what will be brought, what will mm. be, you know, used the next day. Wow. So it's very important that I make sure the pack, uh, you know, the bags are okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, I check them, inspect them, and then the clothes that they're going to wear, if they're still undecided, it's okay. But at least I remind them. Mm-hmm. Are you are you decided or do you know what you're going to wear the next day? <laughs> and I also do that. Mimi, so, I also do that yeah. to myself. So I prepare everything. Okay, so are you you're, you're yeah. sort of uh, telling me and I'm hearing from you that everything is clockwork in your household. Everything right, is because, be, you know, precise. So if you miss anything, yeah. it's just a minor glitch. But everything has right. to run smoothly because once you're out of the house, you have yeah. no more control of everything that's yes. going on, okay? And exactly. and you need that for your peace of mind as well. So, right. that is your life during the week. What about your weekend? Do you have time to unwind, relax, put your feet up, and not have a care uh-huh. or worry about everything that's going on? Right. So, Fridays, for example. that, that I really look forward to Fridays because that's going to be my uh, relaxing day, you know? Mm. So, uh, Friday... Right, so I'm, I'm more loosened up. Mm. I am more relaxed. You know, I can watch the TV and uh, I can really hang out with the kids, for example. But and also then Saturday and Sundays, although uh, Saturday is my laundry day, mm-hmm. so that's kind of busy. But in the afternoon, you know, we get to go to the beach or to the stores if we have to go to the stores. But we really make sure that we also have an activity as a family and you know mm-hmm. the beaches here are just down the road really so you don't I'm have really to pay an entrance fee i'm not gonna go there <laughs> <laughs> you right. don't need an entrance fee you just go to the beach anytime no. you want to no mm. entrance fee you can even <laughs> get in to you know you can even not really get in but you can even go to the beaches owned by the house the posh Hotels, you know, five star hotels here. You just, mm. you know, it's that open. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Can you also do barbecue so, in the beach? Like, you know? Right, right. So sometimes, food. yeah, sometimes, most of the times we bring our food. But if our relatives would invite us mm. and have barbecue on the beach, mm-hmm. we also do that. Ah. And because, you know, Mimi, most of our Filipino friends are so fond of parties, mm. you know, partying, birthday party, and graduation parties. Yes. So I really don't uh, feel any homesickness. Okay, I'm 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 always happy attending um, different parties. Not mm, because for true. socialization, but again, that's the my time to connect yes, with our kababayan, right, with our friends, right. Mm. right. Okay, which brings me to my next question, Sid, because um, you, you've, you've given me a picture of your life there in Hawaii, but we've not talked about the elephant in the room, which I don't think is an elephant already, because <laughs> it's already there, <laughs> COVID-19. So, what, mm-hmm. is, um, what is your situation in Hawaii in terms of uh, COVID and uh, your, your, your freedom to move around? and the um, threat of those um, very dire situation to people who get infected with the virus. 
Mm-hmm. Now, situation here, Mimi, is really not normal. So, I'm anxious. The whole family really is scared. We haven't really, well, we've been going out, but we really stayed home for mm. almost four months. And luckily, my husband and I had to work from home. Mm-hmm. And so, that really wasn't a problem. But we experienced that that quarantine uh, effect. Okay, I'm not saying it's a bad effect, but you know, really, it's so restricting and so limiting. Uh, we scared. We we're, were scared to go out and eat out. And actually, you know, we may be happy. We may be okay. But at the back of our mind, especially my mind, you mm. know, uh, I'm so scared. Like mm-hmm. these two weeks before opening of school, most of our teachers in our union are scared to go back. And I personally... I'm thinking of so many things like I wouldn't like to get infected. I wouldn't like mm-hmm. the, the students to get infected as well. That's and right. I wouldn't like to, my, my own kids to get infected. So these are the things, you know, it's really an elephant. You know, it's really a burden on our shoulders. Mm-hmm. But I know it's not only us who are mm-hmm. feeling this. Yeah. But many people, uh, it's really a concern since... Most of our relatives work in the hotel okay. and they are actually under unemployment. And right, I, I can really feel it's that mm-hmm. we used to really say that, yeah, we live in paradise. But now at this moment with COVID 19, mm-hmm. we're not feeling that way. Okay. We're restricting or we're really closing Ma- uh, Maui and the whole of Hawaii up, you know, to. The visitors because we really wouldn't like them to get to us bring the infection to bring yes. the infection in, in the island <laughs> right <laughs> yeah and we've got we've got deaths too so I, I really feel sorry for the family yes yes for sure but how is your routine like now because um you, you are working from home did it change dramatically or you still feel very busy as though you were not on lockdown because you said you have to time everything, you have to prepare everything. Yeah. But now that you're working from home, is it more challenging doing your home management and career work at the same mm-hmm. place? <laughs> right. Well, at first it was challenging. Mm. But because, again, maybe that's the kind of person I am. You know, I'm, I always have a routine. Mm. I made use of my routine as a way to make things really organized and to make things look like normal even if they're not. So, it's challenging in a way that, of course, we would like to go, I'd like to go out or I'd like to explore other things to make my work better. But at the same time, it's more convenient because I don't have to leave the house. I also love that that feeling because you know Mimi I was also thinking before uh, COVID-19 I would even uh, pray inside the car I hope I'll have time because I was really really tired Mm. you know my life is okay after teaching I have to pick up my kids from an after school program Mm -hmm. it's so we call it Kihei Youth uh, Center so after uh, picking them up if the, one of the boys or the boys have their activities like basketball and soccer or tennis. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I have to drive them to the place and pick them up and then worry about cooking and organizing the house when we come home. So I would always pray, I hope I have a, a break. I hope mm-hmm. I have a day off, you know. And then God maybe in a way answered my prayer and you know, I, I got to, to rest. Yeah. yeah. yeah it was that's really good. a respite. Yeah, it was a short yeah. break. Yeah. Because I know we may be easing in restrictions. We may be going back to our daily routine. I mean, uh, <coughs> sorry, COVID-19. But it's going to be very busy again. So yes. busy. So take the most of this opportunity to yes. kind of recharge. Breathe yeah. again a little bit. Enjoy your kids. I'm assuming that your kids are also uh, learning from home, uh, doing oh, yes. online. 
uh, uh-huh. online learning because of the COVID. So take as much time that you need and maybe they could learn uh, some more new skills while they are at home. Like mm-hmm. my kids have learned how to cook more. They said that I've improved yeah. my, my cooking skills because I have more time to do it. It's still a bit of a tricky thing when you have mm-hmm. work, you are at home and then you have to pause for a while, cook the food, prepare the other bits yeah. and pieces. So um, life, life is not going to be static as you know because you said mm-hmm. everything is clockwork and your routine makes you uh, more in control. Um, not control, control, but more, um, yeah. you know, at peace with everything that's going on, knowing that everything is on schedule. So I really appreciate right. you for sharing that experience with me. So if, if uh, for those people who are um, listening to us or watching us right now who still are in that um, confusion stage or are still not in control of their routine as a result of COVID-19, what would be your advice to the other moms there, especially the younger moms, who may be juggling uh, uh, little kids, you know, uh, smaller mm-hmm. ones than than yours, because yours is towards the teen um, years. Yes. So, um, what can you offer them to make them, you know, uh, feel a bit more positive about these things that are happening around us? You know, I've got maybe three things to tell the mothers. I've learned this myself and I'll really be very happy to share these ways or things that I've learned with all the mothers out there. Number one is really to think about, not really think, but you know, implement what you have to do for the day. So for example, part of being, uh, having or talking about that routine, so always have in mind what how does the day look like? How would I like my day to look like for today? Mm-hmm. So yeah. first, uh, you know, and I hope it's okay if I become a, a bit spiritual. During the COVID-19, I learned how to tune in to EWTN. You know, the Eternal Word um, yeah. Network. Yeah. that they, they offer Mass and daily reading. So... I started my day with a Holy Mass and then after that, because I really would like to, you know, be healthy, I did my walking on the first few months just around the house and now I've been going to the beaches, I've been going out, you know, I have this kind of route just still Mm. with with the neighborhood, just for me to have a little exercise and then after that, I I take it one day at a time. So today, I'm going to clean the bathroom. The next day, my focus will be all the surfaces. You know, I have to dust off and clean. The next day, then I have to uh, take a look at each uh, each, uh, kid's rooms and find out what I can do. So I don't overwhelm myself with chores. What I do is, I just look, okay, this is my major activity for the day even you know minor activity like okay fold the, up the clothes so I, I i do that that's my goal and then after that you know second okay have one have your schedule have your major or minor activity number two is really pray mm-hmm. uh, to have, find time to read the bible or read your devotions because i've got my devotion book or even online, you know, just for me to get inspired and for me to feel at ease and, at, and you know, peaceful. Mm-hmm. And third, it's really to meditate. So take time to breathe, breathe in, breathe out, um, do meditation and, and find your center. And when you find your center, you will be assured that and okay we will overcome this mm-hmm. and there will really be a light you know at the end of the tunnel and that will all some peace and reassurance that everything will be fine so just those three things make your your goal for the day pray and meditate by meditation mm-hmm. 
I also listen to my favorite music. I listen to your music, Mimi. And Jana's music. Are you entertained you know, by my music? I, I, right, right. Yes, yes, definitely. And I also appreciate as what you said. I also check out YouTube. And I watch, you know, people cook. I watch uh, what they do. And that also, you know, frees my mind. And diverts my attention. You know, from, from COVID-19. Yeah. I also have subscriptions. Again, I think that's a good tip as well. Uh, subscribe to magazines, online magazines, which are just for free. Mm -hmm. Like the Healthline. And it gives me so many tips on how to keep your home safe during COVID. What to avoid when you go out during COVID-19. Mm -hmm. And how to prepare uh, going back to school. Yes. During COVID-19. So all these things really are helpful. Mm -hmm. I think we are at yeah. the point in our lives where, like you said, we don't overwhelm ourselves or right. we don't um, really kind of take on too much. You know, if you do it day yeah. to day and you have your, like you said, you have your minor and your major goal uh, on a given right. day and you mix it up with things that will relax you. That gives you a sense right. of balance and peace and it minimizes your anxiety and whatever it is that's bothering you. So I think those are very, very good tips, Sydney. And I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that the others uh, will appreciate now the value of scheduling. Because uh, before, I used to think yes. of schedule <laughs> as a scary thing. But now a schedule uh -huh. is your best friend and your, your lifeline to being sane rather than insane. <laughs> It keeps you it is. It keeps right. you on track. It keeps you on track. Okay, Sydney. There's a lot of other things that I wanted to talk to you about, but there's only a limited time that we have for the show. But definitely, uh -huh. I will invite you for a round two because uh, being a teacher, you have lots of mm -hmm. teaching strategies that you can share with um, with our uh, audiences. Uh, we have a lot of teachers around the yeah. world who might learn a thing or two from your experiences. So I really wish to thank you for your time, um, sharing your as a glimpse of your life there in Hawaii with me. So thank you very much. And uh, for people who thank are watching you. us, yeah, for people who are watching us, if you have any stories or any topics you wish to feature in the show, please reach out to me at mimi at dinosocial.com. Samutsari is a member of the Guerrilla Podcast Syndicate. You can also reach out to us through the Facebook page and through my Twitter account and, of course, my YouTube channel. And then mm -hmm. please don't forget to like and subscribe to Samutsari Conversations with Mimi and to the other Guerrilla Podcast programs and, of course, to my own YouTube channel. So, Sydney, thank you very much. Um, good luck. I'll see you again in another episode. And as a way of ending the show, I usually just wave goodbye to everybody. So I invite you to wave goodbye <laughs> and say goodbye to our um, audience members, listeners for today. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, Mimi, for having me. It's Thank an you. honor. Thank you, Sydney. Bye. Thank you. Okay, bye. If you find value in this episode, make sure you like and subscribe to be notified of new releases. If you have any questions or suggestions, please reach out to Gorilla Podcast or send us an email at mimi at dinosocial.com. Spread the word and don't forget to tune in next time.